Almighty and ever-living God, in your great love for the human race, you sent your only begotten Son into this world. We give you thanks as we come to this, our Mass of the Feast of the Nativity, that your Holy Spirit may guide us to celebrate this joyful mystery, that this babe born in Bethlehem, so lowly and humble, would one day become the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Guide us in our service to him in this world, that through our words and our deeds, he may be honored and glorified. These things we ask for the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The introit hymn 82.
Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to this celebration of the Holy Eucharist, or this the Feast of the Nativity of our Lord. Our Mass continues with the opening sentence. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them has the light shone. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, May with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Kindly sit for the ministry of the word, and kindly extinguish your candles while we have the light. A reading from the Word of God, written in the ninth chapter of the book of prophets, Isaiah beginning at the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased in joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as the day on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in bloodshed be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child, for a child has been born for us a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulder. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. The Psalm 96, we will read alternate verses. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. As for all the gods of the nations, there are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens.
ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The gradual hymn 765. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, and beginning at the first verse. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. 
This was the, the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, who has made this most sacred night to shine with the illumination of the true light, grant, we beseech thee, that your word may illuminate our hearts and shine forth in our lives. Through the same Jesus Christ, our oh Lord. Amen. <coughs> At the risk of sounding cliché, or like a stuck old record, I wish to remind you that Jesus is still very much the reason for the season. Verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 9 reminds us why we celebrate. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Happy birthday, Jesus. But a trend seems to be developing across this nation, and I dare say the globe, where some are celebrating Jesus' birthday without him. People seem to be as happy for the season as they always were, decorating, cleaning, gift-giving and receiving, and celebrating with family and friends, but no mention of the birthday boy. Could you imagine someone celebrating your birthday without inviting you to the celebrations? Without Jesus in our Christmas, what are we really celebrating? But most importantly, can we afford to leave Jesus out of his birthday celebration? As a matter of fact, can we afford to leave Jesus out of anything in our lives? My dear friends in Christ, Jesus is not just the reason for the season, 
Jesus is the reason, full stop. Therefore, without Christ, we have no Christmas, and without Christ, we have no life at all. Outside of Christ, there is no reality. There is no logic. There is no reason for anything. Everything was made for Christ. Our next breath comes from Christ and is to go back to Christ. We must fully depend on Jesus. Without him, we have nothing. But with him, we have everything. The people of Jerusalem during the reign of King Ahaz certainly found this out the hard way. King, A King Ahaz was advised by the prophet Isaiah to trust God at a time when King Rezin of Aram and King Pekah of Israel joined together to attack Israel. Isaiah, according to one Bible commentator, counseled Ahaz not to fear Rezin and Pekah because the Lord would deliver Jerusalem. Ahaz had only to trust Yahweh. But Ahaz couldn't bring himself to trust Yahweh. So he sent messengers to the king of Assyria, swearing loyalty to Assyria and asking him to save Jerusalem from Rezin and Pika. He was so desperate for help that he gave them gold and silver from the temple and even began worshiping Assyrian gods. Of course, Teglath Pileser did as Ahaz asked and defeated Israel, but he carried its people into captivity. The price that Israel, Israel paid when they became a vassal of Assyria, a relationship that would impoverish Jerusalem and would lead ultimately to its enslavement and the darkness we heard about in our first reading. It was darkness brought about by the faulty leadership of Ahaz, by his failure to trust Yahweh, by his unfortunate alliance with the king of Assyria. But this is what you get when you do not trust the king of all creation. But Yahweh did not give up on Jerusalem. Neither does he give up on us. In chapter 7, Isaiah told Ahaz of a sign of hope given by Yahweh. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, it said, and shall call his name Emmanuel. We will see the promise of a child again. Those provinces then which first suffered the reign of darkness will become the first to see the great light of the Messiah. Wonderful people of God, we have been living through our own period of darkness, compliments of the pandemic for the past two years. This period of darkness, I don't know what yours looks like, has and continues to be associated with many unpleasant things. Sickness, various losses, financial, job, and death. It has made us fearful of many of the simple pleasures of life, which I am sure we no longer take for granted. Like children playing, hanging out with family or friends, and engaging in all types of social activities. Several persons are battling with some ad adverse effects, and the fear of the unknown is making the future for some seem even darker. I am certainly no Isaiah, but my brothers and sisters in Christ, I am asking you to learn from King Ahaz's mistake and trust Jesus with your life. The people who walked in darkness in Isaiah's time have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of the shadow of the death, on them the light has shined. That great light still shines to this very day dispelling any kind of darkness, that great light is Jesus. Now imagine the people of God having dwelt in COVID-19 darkness for a very long time, suddenly blinking at the brightness of God's light as if seeing it for the first time, or the first time in a long time, 
unlike the shepherds we heard about in Luke 2, 9 to 10. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you this day, in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Wonderful people of God, I am reminding you of that good news today. Jesus came to save us from the darkness, not only of this present time, but for the uncertainty of the future. When we don't have Christ, we live in darkness with no power over sin or Satan. And ultimately, we truly have no life. This is why Jesus must always be the reason for the season, the greatest gift of God, of all. God sent this very special child to have great authority and wisdom and to establish endless peace. This is why he must be the reason for the season and why he has been given these four titles that express the essential character of his kingship. Wonderful counselor. The child will be a wise and wonderful counselor. Wonderful here meaning beyond our understanding. Jesus demonstrated his wonderfulness in various ways when he was on earth, beginning with his conception in the womb of a virgin. He showed he is the wonderful one in his power to heal, his amazing teaching, his perfect life and his resurrection from the dead. Jesus taught many wonderful things that maybe may not be understood by us. Jesus' kind of wonderful is awe-inspiring and superior to any other kind, for he is perfect in every way. Jesus is a wise counselor because he is able to advise his people thoroughly, because he is qualified in ways no human counselor is. He knows all about our human nature. Jesus always knows what we are going through, and he always knows the right course of action. Christ's position as our wise and wonderful counselor means we can trust him to listen to our problems and guide us in the right direction. Mighty God, filled with godly power to lead faithfully, Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that Jesus is the God of strength, the God of power, God our hero and God our warrior. This king will have God's true might about him, power so great that it can absorb all the evil which can be hurled at us until none is left to hurt us. He is the everlasting father. Our earthly fathers live for only a period of time and then they are gone. This child will become the father whose reign will last forever. Under his care, his protection, and his provision, we are safe and will be satisfied for all eternity. But Sam Strauss cautions us. He calls it a descriptive analogy pointing to Christ's character, not to be confused with God the Father. He is fatherly, fatherlike in his treatment of us. He is the Prince of Peace. The establishment and maintenance of peace is no small achievement. Without peace, the continuity of life would not be possible. That is why the Son of God, King of Kings, has come into the world he created. Remember when he was going back to the Father, he said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, I give you. Do not give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That peace of God, which Philippians 4, 7 reminds us, surpasses all understanding and will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus the reason 
for the season. As we celebrate his birth this Christmas season, I pray that his light will always shine in your darkness so that things and situations that seem dark, by his light, we now see the hope that his birth offers us. And if you only give one gift this Christmas, let it be the gift of the good news you have received this night so that others also can focus on the reason for the season and God's greatest gift to us, Jesus. Amen. Let us now reaffirm our faith in Almighty God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. Father and Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken for the prophets. An apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For, for our families, families friends, friends, and, and neighbors. neighbors. And, and for, for those who are, are alone. alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For, for all, all who work, work for, for justice, justice, freedom, freedom and, and peace. peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For, for the, the victims, victims of, of hunger, hunger fear, fear injustice, injustice, and, and oppression. oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those, those who, who proclaim, proclaim the gospel, gospel and, and all, all who seek, seek the, the truth. truth. For Michael our bishop, John and Suzette our priests, and all other ministers. For, for all, all who serve, serve God, God in his in church. This church. For the special needs and concerns of the congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your, for mercy, your mercy is great. Is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your, your name, name forever, forever and, and ever. ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom.
Let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put, put their, their trust, trust in, in you. thee. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. In the moment of silence, we bring our personal transgressions before Almighty God. Now together we pray, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share that peace in our COVID-19 way. Kindly be seated. We will have a rendition on the piano by Jair Ford Godin to be followed by a solo by Zarina Gaskin when a child is born.
child of glory. And all of this happens because the world is waiting, waiting for one child. Black, white, yellow, no one knows. But a child that will grow up and bring tears to laughter, hate to love, war to peace, everyone to everyone's neighbor, and misery and suffering will be words to be forgotten forever. It's just a dream, an illusion now. It must come through, sometime, soon, somehow. When we found a new then Thank you both, Jair and Serena. They offer to him a carol, Ding Dong, Merrily on High. Prepare for the presentation of the offerings. Together we pray. Generous God and Creator, in faith and joy we celebrate the birth of your Son. Increase our understanding and our love of the riches you have revealed in him, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who, by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you indeed be glory, almighty God, because on the night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Christ Jesus is Lord. He has set us free from the law of sin and death. In his name alone is our salvation. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebrations, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread of life. And that light is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us the light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. And we will sing glad songs of praise to Him.
the First Communion hymn, The Carol, Silent Night, Holy Night. Carol number 10, God rest ye merry gentlemen.
The post-communion prayer, together we pray. Father of all, you have united earth and heaven in sending your Son to take our human nature. May we, who have tasted heavenly things, share in the life of his eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill us with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and among you and remain with you always. Amen. Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I take this opportunity on behalf of my family, the Parochial Church Council, and the entire parish family here to wish you and yours a happy and blessed Christmas. As Reverend Suzette pointed out, it has been an extremely rough year, but we give thanks to Almighty God that we're able to gather in this way. There's still many in our world who have not been able to gather for the last year or so. So at least we, God has granted us this opportunity to share in this act of worship. And I thank you for taking the time out to be here. I pray that this Christmas may truly be one for you and your families to share some quiet, reflective time in thanksgiving to God for granting you all the blessings he has bestowed upon you in this life. As is customary at this time of year, we have a pastoral letter from Lord Bishop of Barbados, and we're in an age of technology, so I'll now allow the Bishop to speak to you rather than me reading the letter myself. Dear family of God, I greet you with the love, joy, peace, and hope of Christmas. As we Dear begin family of God, to I greet you with the love, the joy of our Lord and Savior Savior of Christmas Jesus Christ. As we begin at this season to commemorate and celebrate all that the nativity of our Lord and Savior and Jesus Christ, the light of the world, world today, particularly that of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and its ripple effects, we as Christians continue to observe and joyously celebrate Christmas because of the good news such an occasion always has to offer for all phases and stages of life. This Christmas season reminds us and reinforces that the God we serve is not a creator who has simply formed us out of the dust, placed us in this world, and left us to navigate our lives without his divine company and assistance, but rather that he is one who, because of his endless love for us, is ever mindful of us and deeply concerned about our well-being. It is because of that great love that he came to be one with us that we may be at one with him in the person of his son Jesus Christ on that first Christmas morn. On that morn, Jesus was born in a messy stable, in circumstances that were certainly symbolic of the unstable and troubled world into which he came. Jesus entered at a time very similar to ours at present, when there were persons isolated from mainstream society due to incurable diseases or mental and spiritual illnesses, when there was great disparity between the wealthy and the needy, the practice of idolatry and the level of immorality was on the rise, and political oppression and greed were the order of the day under the Roman Empire. It was into such a world that Jesus was born in that messy stable to be God's anointed one and to offer guidance, deliverance, transformation, peace and hope that confident expectation of a good future so long as we rest our lives in him. In fact, 
Jesus came to reveal that this is the true and loving and liberating nature of our God who desires and will give of his best to change our circumstances in life for the better. But it is for us to receive God's Christmas gift and desire that change in our lives as well. One of the primary reasons we therefore celebrate this season is because of the love of God demonstrated in sending his son not to condemn or destroy the world for its waywardness, but to offer us the opportunity to reset our lives, to be regenerated or reborn to a newness of life. He has provided the means for us to realign ourselves with our created purpose, because for some time, this world has been malfunctioning due to human error. It is therefore, my friends, incumbent upon us as Christians to celebrate this season even at this time when our world appears to be in disarray, when hope seems to be waning or in some instances lost, because we have the confidence that our God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He continues to be here with and for us to strengthen, guide, support and deliver us. As he works through his son Jesus Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit within us for the resetting of our lives, our God empowers us to stand strong and to address and overcome the ills of our times and to live in true love for and at peace with him and each other. The word reset, with which we shall become very familiar in the coming year, when used as an acronym, can highlight for us the loving mission of God that commenced on that first Christmas morn as he came in Jesus Christ to R, reach out to us as God with us, E, enlighten us through the word made flesh, S, sanctify us by his sacrificial death, E, empower us through his enabling spirit, and T, transform us through the spiritual renewal of our minds. In Jesus Christ, my friends, God has provided the means of erasing our human errors and granted us a reset of our lives to bring forth peace on earth and love and goodwill to be shared among all peoples. That's the gift of Christmas that we celebrate at this time. I therefore urge us not to lose hope in facing a world currently in turmoil, heightened by the pandemic, climatic and economic crisis that continue to unfold because we are reminded in this season that God still comes to us, abides with us, our Lord Emmanuel, to freely offer in love the resetting of our lives and our world. May this Christmas season then be one in which we all sincerely, joyously, and graciously celebrate and accept anew God's gift of our incarnate Lord to do his work in our lives. May our hearts be always open to be visited taught, blessed, guided, strengthened and restored by Jesus to a life of righteousness, peace, joy and love. And to be assured that our Creator God offers us once again amidst the challenging times, the opportunity also to reset our church and our republic that they both be aligned with His divine purposes. I wish you and those near and dear to you, on behalf of my family and myself, a blessed and peaceful Christmas season and God's continued favor for the year 2022. I am your friend and your bishop, Michael Barbados.
The Lord be with you. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.